Hi, I have welcome to Kareevo. This is episode six of Python Mastery, and in this episode, we are going to learn about data types in Python. So first, what are data types? Why do we even need them? In order to understand that, let me tell you a story. Okay. Uh, once I was asked by my mom to go to a grocery store and get three things. Okay. So the first thing was oil. Second thing is sugar, and the third thing is biscuits. Okay, so there are three things that I want to buy, and the question to you is, what container would I choose in order to get three things, or what container would the person in the grocery store give me for storing these three things? Okay, so the first thing is oil. So if it's an oil, it usually comes up in a bottle or a packet or sachet kind of thing, right? So that is used to store liquids, and hence we are using a bottle for oil. And second thing is sugar. Sugar usually comes in packets, or if you want to store it, you can store it in a box. Okay. And the third thing is biscuits. Biscuits obviously comes in a packet, right? So these are three different things. All are just food materials, but they are stored in different containers. Similar to this, every data has to be stored in its appropriate container. Will not be able to store, let's say. A biscuit in a bottle, you know, it will not even get in, right? So a biscuit can only be stored in a packet or a box, while oil can only be stored in a bottle. So similarly, for each of the data that we have, like for example, your name, your age, or let's say your address, phone number, each of these has to be stored in a respective container, and that is what we call as data type. Okay. So the container is actually the variable that holds. The data and the different types of containers that we have, that is what we are calling as data types. Okay, so we have seen two different things now. First, data types, and the second thing is the variable, right? So variable is nothing but the container that we have in order to store data, and the different types of container denotes the different data types that we have. So what are the data types that we have in Python? So the first thing is obviously string. So what are strings? The things that we have seen earlier, so the words and sentences and characters that we enclose within double quotes or single quotes, right? When you are printing, let's say your name, code I O, or anything for that matter, whatever that you have enclosed within double quotes or single quotes is termed as a string in Python. Okay, so that is what the first data type that we are going to see. Okay, string, and the second thing is called integer. Obviously, it is used to store numbers, right? It can be a positive number, negative number, zero, anything, but it has to be a whole number, which means it cannot be one point five, which is not a whole number. It has to be one, two, three, something like that. That can be stored in a container called int. Okay. So the next thing, if you want to store one point five or two point five, in that case, what type of container do we need? We need something called as a float. Okay. So float allows us to store values. Which has a decimal point in it, so that is the third data type as well. So you have string, string, integer, float, and then the other thing that we have here is called a boolean. So what is a boolean? Boolean is nothing but true or false. Okay. So if you want to store something that has the value of true or false, let's say you want to store whether a person is employed or not, so it's either true or false, right? So similarly, if you have any other cases, whether let's say the switch is on or off, we can denote it using this data type called boolean. Okay. So these are the main four data types that you have, which are very simple data types. Okay. So with this understanding, let's move on to code and dig a little deeper into how each of these data types can be implemented in Python. Okay. So now let's get started. By implementing these data types that we saw, string, integer, float, and boolean in Python. So first, as usual, let's start with writing a comment since it's the good practice, and we are going to do it in each and every single episode. So first, we are going to learn data types, and the first data type that we are going to see is called a string. Okay. So before we get started with, you know, implementing strings, like we saw earlier. Anything enclosed inside our double quotes is a string. So now you are printing a string, right? So this 
is essentially a string that is enclosed inside double quotations or single quotations. Anything inside double quotations or single quotations will be treated as a string. So this is an example of a string. Okay. So as you can see here, you'll get the output as hello. But like we saw earlier in the analogy, you have a container which stores this value, right? And we call that container as a variable. So what is that? So in order to define a variable in Python, you just give it a name. For example, let's say word. And then if you want to assign or put a value or store something inside it, you have an equal to sign and then whatever value that you want to put, for example, in this case, it's hello. Let's give it there. Okay. So this is the variable equal to sign and then the value that we are storing here. And now if you want to check whether we have actually stored this value inside that variable, type the name that we gave here inside the print statement and click on run. As you can see here, hello is being printed here because that is the value that is stored inside the variable word. So if we are printing a variable, it doesn't print that variable's name. Rather, it prints the value that it stores. Okay. So that is how strings work and that is how you can store a string and then print it. Okay. So let's break this exact line. Okay. Down into three simple things. First thing, word is the variable here. Okay. And the name that we have got, you know, given this variable, that's called an identifier. So identifier is nothing but the name that we are giving to a variable. In this case, the variable that we have here, the name of the variable is word. And hence, word is the identifier that we are using in order to name this variable. Okay. Next, we have the equal to sign, which is the operator that we are using. It's an assignment operator like we use in algebra, uh, in mathematics that we have learned. A equal to 5 means we are storing the value of 5 inside the variable a and similarly here we are storing the value hello inside the variable word so that is what this operator does and at last we have the value itself that is hello okay so these are the three different parts in this statement okay so variable also identifier because it's the name that we are using equal to sign and then the value that we are storing so this is the basic syntax for declaring and inserting a value into a variable okay i hope that was really uh, you know clear to you now let's move on to our next data type which is integers okay so similar to strings if you want to store an integer of course we'll have to store it inside a variable so let's you know give a name called as number to it so the name that we are using is the identifier so the identifier here is called number and then we'll have our equal to sign and then give any random number for example 789 okay so this is the number that we are giving here and again you can print it by having a print statement and giving the name of the variable that is the identifier inside the pin statement parenthesis now if we run as you can see here we are getting this value printed in the output console okay so this is an integer so integers can be anything that is a whole number it can be positive or negative okay so positive is also allowed and negative is also allowed but it has to be a whole number which means no decimal point it's decimal not decimal okay so no decimal points are allowed so if you want to store decimal points like we saw earlier we have to use floats okay so what are floats numbers that also has a decimal point so it can store fractions or uh, stuff like that, right? So uh, let's have a different name called number one equal to 78.9. So this value would be stored inside the variable called number one. And here we can also store decimal values. Okay. So that is the advantage that we are getting with floats here. Now, as usual, you can print it by giving it inside our print statement. And as you can see here, 78.9 is printed in the output console. Okay, so these are floats. Floats are just decimal numbers, which also has a decimal point in it, obviously. 
okay so if you want to store uh, let's say an average of uh, two persons uh, salaries or anything that includes a decimal point in it you know you can use floats for that and at last boolean so what did we use boolean for booleans are used to store true or false values yes or no values stuff like that right for example like we saw earlier employment status okay so employment status is like true or false if the employment status is true it means the person is employed if it's false it means the person is unemployed so let's say i'm going to give true here but the important thing to note here is in most languages the booleans would be represented by a small t but in python it's actually capital t so both true as well as false if you want to print true it's this syntax and if you print it as you can see here this is the output but if you want to print false f has to be caps and then print it okay so that is really important because in most languages if you have learned c or java or anything for that matter usually this f or t in true would be in lower case but in python it's always in upper case so just uh, keep that in your mind so that you don't confuse it with other languages so these are the basic data types that we have in python other than that we also have something called as none okay so what is this none usually we use none to say none of the above which means nothing right exactly that is what it means in python as well if you want to store nothing this is the container that you have to choose okay so what do i mean by if you want to store nothing for example uh, in this scenario here the variable has no value but in a later point you might assign a value into it in that case it will have the value as none okay so for example uh, let's say you are giving a is equal to none here that would be how it works and let's say i print a now if we run it as you can see here none is printed okay so these are the basic primitive data types that we have in python okay what do i mean by primitive it's just a basic level data types that we have in python okay so if you get a good understanding with all of these data types you will be you know easily able to solve most of the questions in interviews and everything as well okay so these are the basic foundation things that forms every other thing that we are going to learn complex in the next few episodes so you know try to get a good catch up please try it out time so let me tell you a question the question is yield is equal to 50 print yield what do you think would be the output for this question let me know your answer in the comment section below and we'll discuss the answer in the next episode man we'll also see some other interesting facts and things that we must know about data types see you in the next episode with some more interesting facts about data types and i have a nifty little trick that can help you save a lot of time as well so see you in the next episode and then